Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm going to just encourage all you like cool kids at the back who are just standing, if you'd like to take a seat, to please actually take a seat. All the Toronto folks are straggling in at the back. That's nice. <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Whoa, this is a shaky laptop stand. Great. Uh, my name is Roxanne Duncan. I'm the managing director here at the Push Festival. Thanks. I, I enjoy it as well. Um, before we begin, I want to uh, acknowledge that we are gathered here today on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. We always think this is a really important thing to do uh, at PUSH, but I think we can all agree that in this year in particular, when Canada celebrates a national anniversary, that it's crucial for us to recognize the Indigenous communities who historically have been the custodians and steward of this land. Uh, with that in mind, we're really thrilled to have you all here with us today. Uh, we're very thrilled to have Jess Tom with us here for the keynote. Uh, who's like a truly outstanding show backstage in Biscuit Land is here at the Push Festival. Yay! Such a great show. Tonight uh, it has its last performance at the Roundhouse. If you haven't seen it, get there, see it, try to make it happen. I honestly, I don't remember the last time I enjoyed myself so much at the theater. Uh, no offense to everyone else in the room. I enjoy myself a lot always, obviously. Um, Backstage in Biscuitland is here as part of a series of work that we're presenting from the UK in partnership with Caravan New English Performance. Uh, there's a whole little blurb in it and the program guide, please check it out. Uh, this really great partnership receives support from the British Council, who also supported our lunch this afternoon. So great thank you to the British Council, uh, as well as Arts Council England. And I'm going to invite uh, my dear sweet colleague Norman Armour to the stage. I can't see anything. There we go. <laughs> Uh, to say a few words. Great. Um, I'd also very quickly to acknowledge a couple of other supporters because I know they're in the room and it's important. Um, the festival wouldn't be here today if I didn't say that, um, that we're extremely grateful for the support from the Department of Canadian Heritage. Um, certainly the people locally. I know head office seems to be the the place of influence and wealth and resources, but the local people here, Rita Donovan and her team are extraordinary, and Rita's here, and Randy Miller as well from Ottawa, so please, a big round of applause. <laughs> also, the, the City of Vancouver Cultural Services, the BC Arts Council, the province of BC, and of course, the Canada Council for the Arts, uh, which of course is going through major, major transformation, and I think uh, hopefully also growth. Um, I will be very brief. Um, this is a partnership. Um, it's I would probably even venture to say it's a collaboration in terms of how we discussed uh, how it might happen and that, you know, the notion of collaboration is if the idea has not fundamentally changed in some way from the beginning and the end, uh, then uh, for all intents and purposes, it's not a true collaboration. Robert Rochenberg gave that as sort of a definition. And he came out of that old whole era with uh, Merce Cunningham and others, and it was really about fundamental, radical, radical thinking about how they might create work together and the kind of work that they might create. Working with um, Caravan and partner Maltines has been a sort of a additive thing over the years. Um, this is the second time, I think, seriously working together. Uh, previously, for um, we were talking briefly uh, earlier, um, a few of us about a uh, couple of years ago when we had three groups from uh, England come over. Really, really, I think, I think of it as uh, Forest Fringe. And Deborah Pearson is here from the Forest Fringe, and we had Deborah here as well and everything. So this is built on a history um, that we're extremely proud of and excited by. Um, it's certainly built on financial resources and bringing things to the table. And I think with the changes at the Canada Council, the real serious change that'll happen internationally now for us as Canadian producers and artists and creators is we are going to bring money to the table for the first time in 10 years and that's significant. Um, 
Most of you know Gavin. If you don't, you should. Um, he's one of my dearest friends and colleagues. I stayed at his house, and I don't stay at everybody's house, um, <laughs> or, or everybody doesn't invite me anyway. <laughs> I went for dinner down the street with him and his wife. Um, he is really one of my closest and most trusted colleagues. Um, we won't sleep in the same room anymore after I, he <laughs> 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 I snore pretty loud, so um, in Edinburgh we built it together once <laughs> and he'll never do it again. Um, but uh, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to have him here. We, we were talking about you know what he should cover uh, versus what I should cover so we don't repeat each other. And I said to Gavin, I talk about the why. You know, I, and I mentioned those books in, uh, you know, in airports, uh, Be Here Now. You don't have to buy the book, just read the title and write that down and you're okay. <laughs> there is a book out there in airports that says the why. And I said, you know, uh, people are always interested in the why. Why do this partnership? Why is Caravan here? Why will Caravan be in Shanghai within the next year? What is the reason you're working with Push? What is the reason that Jess is here today to do this keynote speech? What is the reason that the shows that we've chosen together? Why did Point Blank Poets come all the way to Vancouver as this collective to work with us in our youth assembly and such? Answer the why and we're in a good place. So to answer the why, <laughs> Gavin's right. apologize at the beginning, uh, partly because I have no idea what I'm going to say. Um, he had notes. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I've never done this before. I mean, I've done these things before, but I've never done this before. Um, um, yeah, okay. So um, we're going to start with a song. Um, it feels like we should sing. Um, and um, you've got to join in, and everyone will know this song. And when you start singing it, you'll work out why you're singing the song. It feels like it's a particular political act. I don't know if it's going to work, but trust me, will you go with me on this? And um, the last three th words of this song are where the fun is. And it's one of those songs which you have to dance to on the last three words, okay? So as soon as I start to sing, because I'm not a very good singer, as soon as you work out what the song is, will you join in with me? It's a bit like happy birthday. <laughs> I've never done, ne thank you, Jess. Um, <laughs> oh, damn, I shouldn't have said that. Um, uh, so it goes like this. Um, it's for Nelly the Elephant. Uh, so can we go? One, two, three. Nelly the Elephant packed her drunk and went off to the circus. Off she went with a trumpety trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> and I, good. I want to reclaim the word, really. Uh, I think we should uh, accept that really Trump is the word that an elephant makes when it goes off to join the circus. Thank you. Um, so that's the start. Uh, okay, so why are we, why are we here? Um, we're here because, um, well, first of all, um, whilst I accept the sentiment, I'm not really very interested in partnerships or collaborations. In, in my experience, they're mostly people putting aside their differences to get money. And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so not up for that anymore. I just, I just want to fight with people and, and work with people who might become my friends and who it matters more to me that they achieve the things they want to do than that I achieve the things that I want to do. And so I'm not going to do collaborations or partnerships. And I hope, and um, Norman's right, he did stay with us. And that's kind of a demonstration of what's come out of a relationship that's been going on for six, seven years now, is that it now matters to me more that Push is successful in the things that he wants to achieve than we are in terms of the things that we want. And of course, Reciprocally, I know he cares enormously that we achieve the things that we want to do, and that's great, isn't it? And it feels like um, the world is being divided up at the moment, and I belong to a group of people that think we need to unite and we need to find collaborative relationships with people who share our values wherever they are in the world. And so that's the why, is that only by 
promoting generosity and promoting a sort of counter view to the dominant view of the world that is being led by um, someone who has all the appearance of a fascist without any of the ideolo ideology to support it. And it scares me enormously that we should be saying, let's find other models. Let's find ways that we might work together to make common sense of the world. Um, because we know that it's in all our interests that we do not allow people to divide us. So Caravan is exactly based on that premise. And I'm really, really chuffed with all of the artists that have come here for this last uh, three weeks that they're people who have a curiosity and something to say about the world in which we live. No better exemplified than by Jess, who's going to speak to you in a, in a moment. So the other thing to say is despite um, uh, what you might think you've read in the papers about um, uh, the UK, we are absolutely adamant that we want to, f uh, I think there's an opportunity in it all for us to re-find and re-express our place in the world in a post-Brexit uh, 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 model. I don't welcome it, but there's a chance for us to walk into the dark with a torch, and that excites me. Um, so thank you for listening to me rattle on. I really told you at the beginning, I had no idea where this sentence would end, and here it is, thank you. Great. So as I mentioned, um, this partnership was uh, received a great deal of support from the British Council, who have been very generous in their support of PUSH over the last couple of years. Uh, I hope hearing that ramble about partnerships and what it may or may not mean hasn't impacted that at all. Uh, but I'm uh, very pleased to invite M uh, Maria to the stage, who is the country director for the British Council. Thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for those words, Gavin. I couldn't agree more with what you had to say, that um, this is such an important time for us to connect and to be able to work with people around the world to bring arts in people's lives and use arts as a tool, in a way, to help people connect. And I think that's precisely the reason why British Council is a part of such an amazing festival such as PUSH. And I will say right off the bat, I want to thank PUSH and Caravan for being some the best partners we could work with. We've been working with PUSH for quite some time, and it's always been amazing. And I'm so pleased that this year round, with the support of Arts Council of England, we were able to bring four incredible UK organizations to participate in this festival. And um, I hope that a lot of you have had a chance to see the numerous performances that have been taking place. I'm looking forward to seeing one tonight because, um, yes, unfortunately, I'm only here for a day, but I'm glad I could be a part of this. Um, the reason why British Council does this and partners with organizations like PUSH and Caravan and so many other organizations around the world is because we are um, UK's cultural, leading cultural relations organization. Arts is very important to us, as is education, society, English. We work across the world in over 200, um, we have over 200 offices in over 110 countries worldwide and we deliver different cultural programs. And the program's objectives and aims are often to bring amazing people like yourselves on similar platforms so that we can have important conversations, so that we can connect and talk about things that are so important for our shared future. So it is a, it's truly a delight for us to be here today, and I really would like to say thank you to PUSH and Caravan, all the other partners that we worked with, and I really hope you um, engage with the rest of the program. I plan to, and I look forward to the rest of the day. Thank you. Uh, great. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, so now, uh, the 2017 PUSH Festival keynote address uh, features the English writer, performer, and artist Jess Tom, backstage in Biscuitland. Uh, Tom has Tourette's uh, syndrome and co-founded Tourette's Hero as a creative response to her experience of living with the condition. Tom debuted the piece at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and has performed at such festivals as Glastonbury and Shambhala. Tom uh, collaborates with communities to create accessible works that explore wide-ranging experiences, and I just couldn't be more thrilled to welcome her to the stage right now. Uh, 
it's, it's muted right now. <coughs> I have to reset it. of me in my blue and white superhero costume. Biscuit. I also have Tourette syndrome. Biscuit. A neurological condition. Biscuit. That means I make movements and noises. Biscuit. I can't control. Called tics. Biscuit. Having Tourette's. Biscuit. Makes me neurologically incapable. Biscuit. Of staying on message. Fuck it. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. So a lot of what I'm about to say will be a surprise to everyone. Biscuit. <laughs> Including me. Biscuit. <laughs> On the plus side, it does mean I only ever have to write half a talk. Biscuit. Hedgehog. Biscuit. Hedgehog. And awkward silences aren't something I worry about either. Biscuit. Biscuit. Before I begin, Biscuit, I'd like to thank Push Festival for inviting me to speak with you this afternoon. Biscuit. There are three things you need to know, Biscuit, straight away. Biscuit. Firstly, Biscuit, you're going to hear the words Biscuit and Hedgehog a lot in the next half an hour. Biscuit, hedgehog. Um, biscuit, and just so nothing gets lost in translation. Biscuit, when you hear biscuit, I'd like you to think cookie. Biscuit, <laughs> hedgehog, biscuit. Biscuit, secondly, biscuit, if I say something funny, biscuit, you're absolutely allowed to laugh. Biscuit, in fact, it will be a bit odd if you don't. Biscuit, Finally, Biscuit, several times a day, Biscuit, my tics intensify and I completely lose control of my body and speech. Biscuit, these episodes, which I call ticking fits, look seizure-like and need similar management. Biscuit, if this happens while I'm speaking, Biscuit, my support worker will help me. Biscuit, and Biscuit, um, Biscuit, I'm hoping that Roxanne will take over. Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Or Norman will take over. Biscuit, Gavin and Norman will do a dance about sheep. <laughs> I hope you prepared that. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit, hedgehog. Um, I'm going to give a brief description of myself for anyone who might find that useful. Biscuit. Biscuit, I'm a 30-something white woman of average build with curly brown hair and a very cool wheelchair. Biscuit. Having Tourette's gives me a very wiggly body that's constantly on the move. Biscuit. My most frequent tick involves punching my chest. Biscuit. It's happening now <laughs> and now and now. Biscuit. <laughs> Cats. But don't worry, I'm wearing padded gloves to stop my knuckles getting sore. Biscuit. All the slides I'll be showing. Biscuit. 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 With the exception of one photo, Biscuit, that I'll describe in more detail, are colourful hand-drawn cards with the title of each section on them. I'll read each of these out loud in turn. Biscuit. Biscuit. Creativity, visibility, and opportunity, a call to action. Biscuit, I'm going to share with you five ideas that I think are useful for building truly inclusive creative spaces. Biscuit, first though, I'd like to tell you more about my journey from sufferer to superhero. Biscuit, and why celebrating difference matters. Biscuit, in 2010, I co-founded Tourette's Hero, after a conversation that radically changed the way I viewed my condition. Biscuit. Biscuit. My friend Matthew, Biscuit, described Tourette's as a crazy language generating machine. Biscuit. And told me not doing something creative with it. Biscuit would be wasteful. Biscuit. This idea took root and was how I came to see my tics as my power. Biscuit. And not my problem. Biscuit. My life was changed by a single sentence, Biscuit. And it taught me that every conversation has the power to create change, Biscuit. At Tourette's Hero, Biscuit, we increase understanding by sharing the humour and creativity of an often misunderstood condition, Biscuit, and by campaigning for social justice, Biscuit. I believe we all share the power and responsibility for inclusivity. 
the skill. Legislation, resources and knowledge have important roles to play. But to build sustainable, inclusive communities, we need to think, talk and take action together. Let's skip. Let's skip. A report from 2014 on public attitudes to disability in the UK by charity Scope found that 67% of British people felt uncomfort uncomfortable talking to a disabled person. Statistics like this have no place in open and engaged societies. Let's get. As professionals working within the arts sector, you're perfectly placed to make a significant contribution to catalyzing much needed social change. Let's get. Let's get. I want to share with you a personal experience from my work at a children's play project in South London. Let's get. One weekend, let's get, I was lucky enough to witness a moment that was both unremarkable let's get, and at the same time almost too beautiful for words. Let's get. It was a busy Saturday and I'd just come in through the gate at the Adventure Playground. Let's get. All children of all children of all ages were playing everywhere. Let's get. Amidst the general buzz, biscuit, biscuit, of and there was a sudden flurry of activity on the soccer pitch that which caught my attention. Biscuit. Two teenage boys greeted each other. Biscuit. Enthusiastically throwing their arms, biscuit, and grinning. Biscuit. Biscuit. One of the boys was holding a soccer ball, and the other was saying, "Okay, then, biscuit, qu a quick penalty shootout before lunch." They threw down the ball and along with some other young people, Biscuit began to play. This was, of course, a very ordinary scene. Biscuit, it could have happened anywhere, Biscuit, but it's this very ordinariness that made it so special. Biscuit. One of the young men has an intellectual disability and the other doesn't. Biscuit. They go to different schools Biscuit, and probably wouldn't have met if it wasn't for the inclusion project at the playground. Biscuit. This moment had seemed insignificant until I heard actor Idris Elba addressing MPs in UK Parliament Biscuit, about the lack of diversity in film and TV a few days later. He said, Biscuit, there was a disconnect between the real world and the TV world. And he went on to say, the people in the TV world are often not the same people as those in the real world. That ordinary moment in the playground is what my real world looks like. It's what the world looks like for many children and young people across the world. Biscuit. But all too often, it's not reflected in our cultural spaces. Biscuit. Idris's speech was particularly powerful Biscuit, because it didn't just focus on one area. Biscuit. He explains, diversity in the modern world is more than just skin colour. It's about gender, age, disability, sexual orientation, social background, and most importantly of all, diversity of thought. He said, talent is everywhere, but opportunity isn't. Biscuit. And this gets right to the heart of the issue. Biscuit. If you're not white, male, or non-disabled, you're likely to face barriers within the creative sector. Barriers that exist and are replicated within wider society. Unchecked, this lack of diversity becomes a self-fulfilling, the self-perpetuating. If you don't see yourself represented on stage, you're much less likely to think that performing is a possibility for you. Biscuit. If drama schools are financially inaccessible and policymakers continue to strip support from poor or disabled students. It's your mother. She'd like to go on a date. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> biscuit, hedgehog. Cats, biscuit. Um, biscuit, 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 hedgehog. Biscuit, biscuit, if biscuit. Our institutions won't ever be inclusive. And if non-disabled actors, directors, writers, producers and programmers don't experience difference at the start of their careers, how can they be expected, Biscuit, to consider it within their practice later on? 
It also leads to non-disabled actors playing disabled roles and being praised for how closely they mimic disability or crip up. Biscuit. While I believe that positive steps have been taken to change this in recent years, now is not a time to be complacent. There are still too many people who don't see themselves reflected on stage, screen, or in our cultural spaces. Biscuit, this is bad for the industry, and it's bad for us all. Biscuit, hedgehog, a wealth of talent and, and creativity is going to waste. And seeing the same stories told by the same people over and over again gets boring. Biscuit, this represents a financial as well as a social and moral risk for the sector. Biscuit, biscuit. It's time for us to recognise the opportunities we're missing when we fail to embrace diversity. Biscuit. Considering the, broad, the, the potential of broader stories and finding ways to connect talents biscuit, with opportunities will lead to a dynamic biscuit, creative sector. I want the children and young people I work with and those in your communities to know that all possibilities are open to them. I want them to see people who look, sound, or move like they do, being successful, biscuit, in all sorts of roles. Biscuit. The two boys on the soccer pitch could easily never have met, and their experiences remained invisible to each other. It's only through increased visibility of difference in our cultural life and in our communities that discrimination and assumptions can be broken down and equality of opportunity made achievable. Biscuit. And in a moment in our history, when so much is under threat, this is more important than ever. Biscuit. I'd now like to share, Biscuit, with you five ideas that have made a big difference to how I think about disability, my creative practice, and my identity. Biscuit. First up, I'm not disabled by my body. Biscuit. I'd like to start by talking about the models we use to conceptualize disability. Biscuit, for a long time, the consensus was that we followed a medical or charity model. These see a person as being disabled, Biscuit, because their body or mind is impaired in some way and they are in need of pity or cure. Biscuit, both focus on what's wrong with the person and not on what the person needs. Biscuit. By contrast, the social model says disability is caused by how society is organised. Biscuit, for example, if I can't get into a building because it's surrounded by steps, biscuit, 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 beans, the medical, biscuit, the medical model says the problem is my wobbly legs. Biscuit, the charity model will probably ask you for money to help make me walk or something like that. Biscuit, biscuit. In contrast, the social model identifies the steps as the disabling barrier. Biscuit. People are often nervous about calling me disabled because they view the term negatively. Biscuit. I don't see it that way at all. Biscuit. For me, saying I'm disabled acknowledges the barriers I face because of our collective failure to consider difference. Only if these barriers are acknowledged can they be changed. Biscuit, the social model may already be familiar to you, but I wanted to mention it because of how pervasive the medical and charity models it are across the world. Biscuit, understanding disability using the social model has raised my confidence and has been instrumental in how I've come to think about my body and my experiences. It's the beans. Biscuit, don't headbutt the mic. <laughs> Biscuit. Hedgehog, biscuit, it's the reason I say I'm a disabled person rather than a person with disabilities. Biscuit, disability isn't something I carry around with me and it's not per a permanent, unchanging state. I am more or less disabled in different contexts. The exciting thing about this is that by working together, we can create less disabling spaces, systems and attitudes. Biscuit. Biscuit, the next idea that's been important to me is adjustable environments. Biscuit, 
Permission to adjust my surroundings to meet my biscuit needs is both essential and transformative. Biscuit. When I first started having ticking fits, being able to leave my apartment safely suddenly seemed impossible. Biscuit. But as soon as I realised I could change biscuit my environment as and when I were necessary, I felt much more manageable. I've commandeered lobbies, rearranged office furniture, and on one occasion made use of a fire station floor carefully covered with blankets. My increased confidence in adjusting my surroundings has made the difference between me being independent and included rather than isolated and restricted. Three years ago, Tourette's Hero collaborated with Tate Galleries on We Forgot the Lot. Biscuit, biscuit. Here's a photo from the event. Biscuit, biscuit, which shows a boy in a green jacket reaching out for a walkie-talkie from a wooden structure in a gallery full of paintings and other people. Biscuit, biscuit. Children from up and down the country, biscuit, 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 up and down the UK, biscuit, with and without Tourette's, were invited to take over Tate Britain. 300 participants worked with 11 artists to reinvent the new, newly renovated building. We set them a simple task. Go into the galleries, get involved with the artists, and help Tate transform to make sure nothing gets forgotten. Biscuit. Permission to change space to meet individual need was the concept underpinning the whole event, and it worked. I'd like to share with you a quote from a parent who bought, brought her family that day. Biscuit. It's nice that when my son dives into a whole load of stuff in a corner and wiggles about in it, I don't need to worry. In fact, all that happened was that other kids came and lay down in the fluffy stuff and had a wiggle with him. The social model has raised my confidence and has been instrumental in how I've come to think about my body. In just five years, Unlimited has radically changed conversations about disability arts in the UK. Biscuit. Where previously work by disabled artists may have been viewed as therapeutic, community based, or niche, Biscuit. there's now an increased enthusiasm around disability culture, which is enriching the whole sector. Last week, Liz Carr, who I'd first seen at Liberty a decade ago, presented her Unlimited Commission show, Assisted Suicide the Musical, <laughs> <laughs> on the main stage of the Royal Festival Hall in London. Biscuit, for me, being part of a scene of disabled and non-disabled people making new work together <laughs> has been incredibly important. Biscuit, travelling internationally, I've seen how, Biscuit, how hard it is for disabled artists in other countries to connect with each other and with presenters. This might be because of geographical, economic, economic or attitudinal barriers. Surely, as an industry of creative thinkers, these are challenges we are well placed to address. Biscuit. For a dynamic, strong and representative sector, it's essential to invest in inclusivity for audiences, for artists, and for industry leaders. Disability isn't a niche issue. Statistics from, from the World Bank estimate that one fifth of the global population is disabled. So there's a strong business case, as well as a social imperative for investing in access. Recent research by, in the UK by Attitude is Everything perfectly demonstrates this. They worked with a hundred live music venues to improve their accessibility. And in just one year, this led to an increase, uh, to a 26% increase in attendance by disabled people at live music events. This is Biscuit. The, estimate, the estimated additional income associated with this is, is believed to be worth £7 million. Pounds. Biscuit. Access is an asset. Making disability culture centre to establish creative spaces will make them richer, creatively, socially, and financially. Biscuit. Visibility matters because art, culture, and humour are great at shifting thinking and creating a deeper biscuit, understanding of difference, but only if this is led by people with lived experience. Biscuit. Hedgehog. 
Change isn't always a battle. Let's get. I used to think that attitude change was a long, drawn out process. Biscuit, biscuit. Tourette's heroes taught me biscuit, that it can happen very quickly. Biscuit. I first realised this on a train journey with my sister. Biscuit. We were on our way to a friend's hen party. The train was busy. Biscuit. And I was curious about how other passengers were reacting to my tips. A brief search on Twitter revealed that at least one woman had noticed me. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. On a train with genuine Tourette's person in the same carriage. Biscuit. Here's the edited highlights. Biscuit, I'm a baby. Donkey, what an affliction. Biscuit. I responded by saying that it was also a gift and pointed her in the direction of our website <laughs> and a video by two performance artists which brought my tics to life. The next tweet was a very different tone. <laughs> this is amazing, not affliction, creativity. She then asked if she could use the video in an installation about identity she was presenting that day. <laughs> <laughs> I loved seeing this evolution in a few short tweets. It left me feeling incredibly optimistic. Biscuit. Creative change doesn't have to be a battle. It can be joyful, <coughs> biscuit, persuasive, discursive, and silly. If we can get people to engage, we can get them to change. Biscuit. So my challenge to you, Biscuit. To leave you with three challenges for this event and beyond. First, nurture our outcomes. When we started to enter, we had no idea how people would respond. That's why this game is acknowledging the human threats, but risky. This system is survival in ways I never have imagined. And the most exciting opportunity has been totally planned. Because I...